and the halfway mark for our last chance qualifiers. Got ourselves in here for a game. Sigma Mind going to be the first set of fights between Shrugan and AS. But looks like Shrugan actually got himself a little bit of rubber band off that grapple back going backwards. But he doesn't only have one grapple left. Having to keep in mind about his chase against AS here is going to be very, very good predicament because he knows that there's no armor for him. So now it's up to AS so whether or not he's wanting to invest the F2 here. But looks like RMB is going to be released here. Shrugan being careful here. He's going to be losing out a lot of a chunk of his armor here. He has to use the F1 to invest. But the F2 comes out here from AS, and I think it's going to be a good chance for him to get off of here and backing off and finding an armor. Even with that here, let's see if they can remain to work towards him. Oh, Esriel actually ends up overshooting, and because of that, it actually cost him a lot of shield here. Oh no, it's not looking good as the LT actually ends up coming through. Not the LT, uh, the stun coming through is Esriel trying to see if maybe they can close in the gap a little bit here, but it's not going to be enough as he ends up getting stunned towards that. Nice little reset here. It doesn't take too much insane damage here as Esriel's going to try to keep that situation a little bit more apparent. Try to see if he can back off this here and maybe tries to use that towards the information here, but let's see if they can work, rotate towards that one here. Now, Frostfist has to worry about Exxon, but he's going to be locking him down here because the third party could be arriving with those musket shots I heard in the background from Fang. He finds the RMB off of Frostfist. Frostfist finds a parry off of Fang, but of course, he does not want to go for the animation. He knows the combo is going to be utilized, but gets caught into the parry, but the parry goes straight to the forward's Fang, and Frostfist takes an RMB from the face, and the fan coming up from Fang, and the longsword being from Exxon is going to confirm the kill elimination. Fang has to be very careful about putting this uh, putting this pressure on because Akame, he's hunting around and trying to make sure he can catch a close knitted kill. <laughs> Got to be careful, though, with some of those. Definitely is going to have to work towards it, seeing if maybe there's an opportunity for him to try to see if he can close this in. PST just trying to wait it out. His star is just waiting for him to attack, so that way he can hit the parry. But sadly, it's not going to be that easy for him to try to work towards it. He says, hey, buddy, you thought you had an opportunity here. You thought you had something that maybe can make sense here, but obviously it's not going to be enough. His star tries to close in just a little while longer here. The question is, is it going to be enough to do what he needs to? He tries to hold strong here with that ulti here, and it looks like star is not going to make it easy for him to try to see if he can close this out. I think one thing is that Armor Swap is going to give a little bit more position for Pace now for him to have to maybe look into investing in Ultimate. If Star decides to use the proc hold, and there it is, it's going to be V2. He's going to dodge the first V2. He's going to be looking for the second block. He uses F2 while the F2 is coming out from Star. He gets a successful combo rush, and he finds the elimination there. Clean as can be. Star finding his first kill into this lobby and making sure he can try to keep that momentum going out here from Crow's Nest and beyond. Yeah, it definitely was a tough one here in this... Uh in the situation here but hey you never know sometimes sometimes you can end up in certain situations here where maybe that you are in the negative and then you end up being in the positive and i think that's how some of these end up going so you definitely have to kind of work towards it and make sure that you're not in the the, the worst places to be and meanwhile it looks like Shaw is just getting absolutely destroyed here. He gets caught in the juggle. He's trying to work towards it. He gets absolutely decimated. But Esrael misses the bow opportunity for the finish here. GG Shaw is able to find a free, a absolute free gray shield here just to keep it alive. But the question is, there's no such thing as free as he ends up catching him with it. Nice stature towards it. Tries to see if he can capture the stun, but it's not enough as he ends up popping the ulti here. S-Rail just trying to figure that out towards the ending or the jumping and he's trying to maneuver it a little bit longer here. It's not going to be enough time here. He's trying to maneuver through and trying not to get caught up here. Here comes the absolute tiger. The mauling coming through here. Here comes the stun yet again. He's going to try to see if maybe he can close him out this time here. Absolutely sends him going though. And he ends up catching the stun. He gets the finish. S-Rail finally catches it, sir. Oh, he almost messed that up. And for a split second there, I was looking at him and I was like, bro. <laughs> Taking everything off of that bow shot. Four shots, five shots. No, not going to happen. But he did find enough rage to be earned back after the first enchantment. So shout out to Soraya Gun getting his second elimination there. Now we're going to see Cam 1 here. Another the interesting thing about V2 for Liam is that it's not rage based. It's pretty much going to be a two investment, a two throw out. I'm not going to say the word. Going to throw out a ball to catch the opponent and try to force himself in a uh, position to lock the opponent down. But AS in a spot against Zui Shi, looking for the RMBs, goes straight back into flight form. He has it available for him. He's going to look for Zui Shi's level three swing. There it is. Confirms. Gets a little bit burned. And I think it's going to kill confirm here. No longer is Zui Shi going to live here for much longer with the burn effect. <laughs> I lied, but the level three swing into the building. That's going to be it, Dobby. That's going to be AS's first elimination to this game. AS finally gets one, though. We love to see it, though. It's finally able to work towards it, though. A little bit of timing towards this. Sometimes you just got to be able to put yourself in the right shoes here. All the way with this one is Cam. Just trying to see if he can maneuver it. Hey, listen, Cam has been the easy one so far here. Let's see. He ends up catching the parry, and, well, <laughs> I'm not surprised by that one at all, to be honest. That's really unfortunate. Sorry. It's tough. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's good to see though that there's a chance here for him to come back. CDY finds a kill still too from that bow shot. So 
unfortunately for uh for akame wasn't able to kind of find that cam is still in soul form into the sigma mind finding out where where he where he's where he wants to try to spawn in here it's going to be his play cdy though purple hong sword romy ain't going to spawn out here in about 80 seconds or so so for these players going to make the rotations out and as is just looking for the hunt here and i think dobby that uh, as is like really just trying to catch himself into that top three placement he's good to go but there is a four kill difference between uh third and six and then the, just a point six difference between that and seventh i mean so far though Six and seven is going to be a little bit closer of a niche here, but we love to see it though. This is what I this is what I love to see though. So, my, like I said, the closer we get towards the end of the night, obviously, the more that you start to focus a little bit on the sixth and seventh, right? Mm. Sometimes it's sometimes five and six, and then seven and eight, because then it also depends on how close they are too. With those points, is going to be very, very, very important. And sometimes in those areas. That's where the real fights start to happen because now they know the time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. You know, a hundred percent. And like, we got to look into scene about, you know, when they can be aggressive, right? Mid game and having the builds necessary could make them want to take fights. Like we've seen uh, into round, you know, one into today where we saw, you know, uh, Exxon tried to get a force off of GG Shaw right into that mid game to the late game. And it backfired because all of a sudden he gets focused on, regardless because once that push you know he starts pushing the bay poking the bear that's when gg shaw said i'm just gonna take a book out and rip a page and just burn it in your face and then you know kicks him out of the game and that can happen uh regardless of the play but it also comes down towards the gear and we're gonna see cdy here with a purple hong sword blue armor up against anakos exton is gonna be his opponent into this Romeo. take it away dobby i mean we could try to see if we can work towards it though and see if maybe something makes sense towards it let's see if they could figure that out here over time a CDY is going to be able to try to close this one out here. Going airborne on him. Sadly, misses out on the grapple opportunity the first time. He's going to try to see if maybe he can close him out. See if they can work with it here. As they're still going to try to work around this. Trying to see which one kind of makes sense here towards this. Taking his time with nice with each strike. Trying to see if maybe they can make it look a little better each time. Ooh, nice momentum. To try to see if maybe they can carry that. In terms of that momentum. And then in terms of what makes sense here. And kind of going back and forth here. 39 seconds left on the clock here. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like I feel like they're both actually going to uh, not make it. Let's see. I'm going to I'm gonna take a guess here. My guess is going to be, I don't think they're actually, I think the time is going to be up. I think it's going to be too late. And I think they're both going to have to fight uh, to get a, another uh, to get another shield here. 20 seconds left on the clock. Let's see if they can close this one out. Or let's see if they're both going to have to fight to try to see if maybe they can not have it though. But they're both jumping up and down here. It's actually... They're going to have to go for the reset here. One of them's going to try to see if they can go forth towards it. Nice strike. Oh, he's going to catch him with the juggle. Oh, gets mm. the finish. And CDY stays alive. Shuts him down. Gets the finish. Says, ha, how you doing? Taking you out for shopping because CDY is going to go ahead and get that purple armor gold weapon. The AS is going to avoid that B1 test hole. Coming out from Akame, a realm winner. So gold fan is in standby form. You're going to see an enchant be de disenchanted. As you can see, GG Shaw was able to find it. AS still looking to try to go some heal back while he's walking away fear. But Akame ain't going to let that one slide. He has ultimate cast and another 10% rage. So he's going to be trying to earn that one up. It's a change into the in this patch as well where uh, Tessa has a 13 second delay before she can build up rage after the ultimate is confirmed hit. So for Akame right now, it's just really for him to kind of bring out that time to kind of bring it back into play. Uh, just finding a target after that duration to just hit and just be able to build it up or rage per second in general. Now, AS having to force himself out here, I think it might be a good chance here, Dobby, where he's going to be looking to try to just keep himself alive, but it's going to be a tough call with three enemies on the vicinity. Three people within the vicinity, though, definitely is going to be a little bit tough, but... It's not necessarily impossible. Let's see if I can figure that out here with that amount of timing. A CDY is going to go absolutely airborne, catching the fire, trying to see if they can capture Cam on the outskirts of this. He is the free ELO player here of this fight, which is very unfortunate to say during last chance qualifiers here. Let's see if he can capture the timing. Maybe, maybe he could try to work towards it here. But that flame is definitely not making it easy for him here. Oh, nice skip. Trying to see if maybe he can go around it. The timing, BBE just trying to run around from it, trying not to get caught up, but it's not going to be enough as the free ELO is going to be very helpful for him, though. GG easy type of momentum, though, but is it easy for as CDY as he's going to try to see if he can ro rotate towards this and keep himself alive? I don't know. Um, might be going for the pregame here because uh, right now we're going to see Frost was into the Gamma Mine. Having to chase down here CDY, who does have himself in a little bit of a 
you know, a sticky situation has Vermillion Burks might for another minute and a half or so. So for him right now, it's just, you know, keeping himself nice and sustained here and using those, uh, using those pillars to kind of work off his uh, scare rushing away from his opponents. Frostless, in the meantime, he does have Romanian depletion. He doesn't have any kills this match so far. So for right now, it's going to be looking to try to find that low health target. But a target on the move is kind of Tarka, you know, Tarkas in general. If he can find the time of getting caught out, he'll just use F1, use that as a setup for just baiting out the enemy and just shift out, dodge out, get out of harm's way, and just keeping himself safe in the long run. We can save him for the long run here, but the question is, how long is that run? Are we talking about? Are we talking 10 miles? Are we talking a full marathon? I don't know, because right now it could be shorter. Shorter than... <laughs> the cowardly dog screaming whenever they see something. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> Definitely going to have to work towards that one here as he's going to go back and forth. Not looking good as CDY is going to come through and absolutely steal the elimination away. But it looks like he's going to be able to get eliminated, though. But he'll be back because he's got that uh, Vermillion's Burst might. So it's good for CDY. He's got two eliminations. That's exactly what you want when it comes to that. That's exactly what you want. That's yeah, good. It's a perfect case scenario. And... Right then and there, start having three eliminations as one of the shy in the lobby. Finding that goal from Daniel's elimination is great. Now, Paste finds the LMB uppercut off of this Akko, so it's going to have to force the ultimate for uh, for his opponent as GG Shaw is just trying to rotate through inside of the temple. Still has zero eliminations into this game, but having to invest the ultimate is going to notify everyone in the vicinity. Now, Akame is looking to hunt this down, look for the scare rushes. He find, finds Paste off of the third floor, and he's keeping him to a corner. Paste. At a low enough point, could get focused out here between all targets because he is the lowest health target here, and that's going to be a dangerous predicament. He finds the dodge, he finds the RB, Akame into the zone here, but the army from the fan of Fang gets that, sets up the tether and finds the elimination. And he looks for the RB, he's looking for the Sobel, and he's going to deny anyone in the vicinity to try to pick that one up. He's going to go straight towards the ground, but we're going to see GG Shaw finding elimination here against a combat. The parry from Shaw, clean as can be, and looking for the RB. The F1 could be invested, but Fang is going to look for this back out, and Shaw is going to look for that time to reset. Kame is able to actually successfully get that finish, though. Says, see you later. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate all the, what you've done so far here. Nice little shutout. Nice little time to try to see if they can find that out here. Shaw able to get elimination on the board. See, Wolf, CDY, still able to complete it overall there. He still has those four eliminations in total here as he's now back in the game. And JJH just waiting to see if maybe somebody decides to pull up. But let's go back inside of that realm of Yang and what we saw earlier here with that replay. Let's see how Frostivus was able to clutch this one up. Okay, he's got everything against him, right? He's got low shield, low heals. He's got the stun. He pops open the ulti here. The stun ends up most likely probably stopping the momentum that he has. And then uh, he ends up going right back up towards the air. Actually, never mind. Just absolutely getting pelted. And then he ends up getting out, which is unfortunate here, actually. It was on the other side here of that as S-Rail is going to try to see if he can close in this gap towards GG Shaw. Rock climbing all the way up towards the wall here, trying to see if he can close it out. Forces that, oh, here comes the mauling, though. That's unfortunate. He ends up getting caught with the stun. Can't really do too much with it. Tries to see if he can get away. It's not going to be enough. Oh, no, it's not looking good. Ooh, ooh just in the lick of time. GG Shaw was able to stake it away and try to stay alive from this one here. But so far, uh, for some of these play styles, it's looking pretty good. But between JJ, H-Star, and Action, sir, who you got? I don't think it's going to be up to uh, the mitigation that Star can bring. I think Exen could have a bit of an advantage with catching her without the block enabled, but Star has a Shio ultimate ready to go. Looking for those mid-air musket shots, looking for the F2, and just try to drop down. Finding Exen's F1 to be invested. Star will now take the time to go in for those range shots. He finds one. Doesn't hit the two. Uh, he goes for the RMB release. Gonna hold check it. Gets for a clink. Star looking for his chance here for forcing a lethal jab down towards Exen, who finds his uppercut. This is gonna be really bad for Star right now. If he can keep the extension, Exen could catch it, but he drops it right then and there. F2 invested. You can see a double jump from here from Exen. The uppercut is confirmed, but off top of the pillar is where he's gonna land. Star has ultimate still to this day. We're gonna see Exen try to look for this RMB from the hold check here. There it is. Crouch LMB forces the F1. Again, there's gonna be a chance for the RMB release. There's gonna be a chance for another RMB release. Dodges it, goes up the LMB, and that's gonna force a neutral out for the ultimate from Exen. Star getting his ultimate cast is going to be looking for this chance to avoid the V2 pounce, but there's going to be the first one. V2 activated, looking for the flash that pursuit, finds it, avoid the pounce coming up for the first one. Now let's take a look to see how Star is going to be looking for the second one because there's about 20 seconds left. Star has to be careful about this. The second dash is going to be available. Going to catch that second pounce though as Exen gets some heal back. Star has one more block readily available to go. And looking for Exen here for those that V2 uh, flash that pursuit. We could see a chance here for it. There's going to be an avoidance. 10 seconds left. We're going to see F2. Exen gets a parry. This could be a chance for him to get this extension. And for this kill potential, goes for the carousel. One, two, three. RB, jump LMB. He doesn't get it. They both meet their fate. And they both have to find a body or else they're done.
Oh, both of them was going to get out of that. I did. I did make the call. One of them was probably going to end up going out, but obviously I was a little, I was one, I was one realm of Yang too early. Unfortunate. As uh, DRG's Fang is going to try to see if they can walk, walk, climb this, trying to see if maybe they can find a uh, Shaw, but it looks like one of them ends up fighting an S itself. It's TE's S rail inside of this fight here. Some of these uh, the players really, really maneuvering all throughout all of this, trying to make sure not to get caught up here, but Fang is going absolutely airborne. You saw far and high he's going. Goodness gracious, the amount of spinning he's doing faster than the tennis ball hit by Serena Williams. Anyway, trying to see if they can rotate a maneuver with that one there. Closer towards it. Jesus shot trying to go up towards it. Oh, he ends up getting stunned. And guess what? The stun is in the middle of the sky. He can't even stop the stun. He's forced to get it hit. And GG Shaw is going to get hit. An absolute nice buffet at a Korean barbecue. Not looking good for him, though, as he's going to get hit. DRG's Fang trying to see if maybe they can close in the gap here. GG Shaw trying to see if he can maneuver it out and just getting caught in the back stretch. How did he live through that? Three people charging up their, their blue focus just mm. for them to miss. I think one thing is that his F1 being gold focused and also getting 60% mitigation by hitting those three targets is massive for them not to want to take a, a good gander or chasing because they'll do still a little bit of damage. But Shaw having Dr. Ol here using the V2 pounds to kind of expend uh, a way for him to extend the distance for ex between him and his opponents. He looks for the rotation through Sigma Mine. As it comes out here, Joy Shi is going to be the first one to lock this one in. He finds that elimination. He finds that kill. He finds the Sobel and the Star is trying to pick it up. And he finds it himself to get out of the Roma Yang depletion. Three eliminations for Star. And he's still in the game here for potential top in the board. But CDY is somewhere in the midst and i think he's looking for that target play for mvp and we would love to see that in that right now absolutely even with that towards the back stretch here and still going to be able to work towards it though more and more and more but even with that though i mean it's, it's obviously starting to close it in little by little here um top seven so far star on the chopping block same with junshi junshi can get out of this oh jubauta and Jun yeah action and junshi are actually tied you see that you know that. 13.3 for oh, both yeah. players. 13.3 between eighth and eight, between eighth and seventh, leading up to 14.3 to 16.9. That's uh in the words of my uh benevolent brother, uh Poggers. <laughs> <laughs> One kill difference between the two of them to catch themselves into placement. Of course. Beating out Star would be their best case scenario, but Star still has himself to be healthy as can be unless they take the time to lobby him out. But that also comes down to the zone, right? We see Moonbane coming in here in just a moment. As Exxon is under Roaming English, he needs about 90 seconds to find a kill potential here. Otherwise, it's not going to be having a fun time now. Across the board, there's only one character here who doesn't have a combo breaker ultimate slash skill, and that is going to be Star. Because everyone else has a combo breaker ready to go here in case he finds it. Like this, for instance, is, there's Joyce's first combo breaker. Okay. Now Joyce needs to be locked down here for Exxon, but the tether is going to be his insurance policy to kind of force disengage this fight. And then the RT Fang finds Exxon, finds the F1, finds the distant chain here. We're going to see everyone going to be focused on Exxon here as a result because he's going to be in broad daylight. Everyone's going to take the time the range out and x and having the best ultimate can he catch joishi here is it gonna be enough time for him to catch that target absolutely insane here as action is gonna try to see if he can close in this gap between him and junshi nice little bit of a step back here but the ulti is gonna come through oh almost tries to get him with the tiger thing but not gonna be able to do it Meanwhile, action trying to work towards it. Oh, nice stun here. The question is, are they going to be able to at least stop it here? Fang just trying to guard. He's able to at least get the stun off of one, though, but it looks like it's not going to be able to do enough. And Fang is actually able to come through, catch him off the extra. Just says, where do you think you're going? And captures the free elimination off of that, though. Looks like Star is able to capture elimination and stop action. Actually, in this moment here. Actually insane. What a finish. Man. He's tied for uh, with CDY, and CDY is just chilling out for placement. I wouldn't blame him. I mean, he's the only Tarka. Who wants to fight a Tarka in the final circle? You know, no one wants to take that chance, so he knows I mean, that. He's, he's going to be waiting this one out. I mean, I think it's fun to fight a Tarka, though. Of course. Until, you know, you know, you're propelled, and you just sit back, and you just, you know, take a break, walk away, go to lunch, uh, take some notes, come back. All fun and games to you, to you. And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> Taking them out. I think one other thing, though, is that he doesn't want to get caught by Tessa's enchants. That's big upset. If he has to use ult, he's like, I'm going to send you to the Shadow Realm. And then Tessa's like, uh, knock, knock. And there's nothing he can do about it. That's his, uh, that's his biggest kind of gripe if he kind of gets focused on a third party. I think Fang, though, having the opportunity of buying gold out here, he's going to be buying stuff from the shop, finds a, and buys a gold armor before that spare well spawns in. It is going to put him in the lead here, Dobby, I think, for a gear department aspect. 
Even with that, though, pretty decent so far here towards that. So it's not too bad. And let's see if they can rotate towards this one. Let's see which one is going to be a very big benefit for some of these players, though. If they really are able to pay attention to it a little bit more. I think it's going to be very helpful for them, though, depending on what makes sense here. So let's hope that maybe they see that. Mm-hmm. It's crazy too, because he also has Vodra's grip. So if he loses, if he loses a, a blue focus forward to parry, he can keep the weapon. He has a pole sword, so that's going to be a really big benefit for him right now. But someone's wanting to try to sneaky sneaky into this way, and Shrugan just trying to poke this one out. Star as well. We're going to see the spear well lose its shield while here. There it is. Looks for those RMB spans. We're going to see a chance for him to try to find out what he's going to be able to pick up. And nothing of value, so he's going to be backing off here as a complete sense of the word, and just making sure he can try to get himself in the safety net position. Because now we're entering into the final six minutes. These players have themselves whatever builds they. Got. Got and trying to be careful for their realm of things. Uh, for instance, his first struggle, right? He's going to be careful enough with his Tessa and then with the Jades in selection, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, gentlemen, he has a Soul Slash. So if he ever needs to find a Katana, he can go for it. But I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, low chance of him using a Katana versus a Soul Slash or for a Honk Sword. Even with that, though, let's see if they're going to be able to maintain this, though. I feel like the lead's going to be a little bit tougher for some of this, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to work. Meanwhile, CDY and Star are right near each other. All they have to do is round the corner. But it looks like it's going to be a little bit more of a calmer pace mm -hmm. towards this circle. I think the timing of it is pretty hasty. <laughs> it's a little bit. I saw a prize fall. I saw a prize fall somewhere in the builds. So someone's got a prize fall. If they miraculously find that whole double blue focus for a horizontal dagger and catch someone out, it's going to be a deletion. Like everyone can focus onto it. Even if Tessa would like take the, yeah, I'm taking the opportunity because once that happens, you know, that person can either die or get caught into an enchant and then they can die again. Uh, it's really getting caught out twice in a row. That's not the best case. But you can see Strogan switched over his katana. Now he's actually going to want to try to invest into this uh, soul slash that he does have on hand. So he'll have his opportunity of doing so just for those range blue focuses. That, he, that way he doesn't have to kind of throw out a fan RMB that's kind of to be expected, but he can just double hold check that blue focus for sure. Meanwhile, it's going to be interesting, you know. Star. He's right there. All you have to do is round the corner. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, 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 just look right over. Meanwhile, in the replay area here, PST moving, maneuvering around, just trying to make it harder for Star to really be able to time the hits, though. Struggling to try to see if he could time it just right. Star trying to maneuver through the rotation. Tries to pop. It does pop the ulti here. And it looks like that could be something that's really, really going to be helpful for him, though. Nice little bit of a dodge. Could be a fantastic counter, though, for Hadi. And it looks like they're back at it. Both of them working towards it here. Nice little bits of movement. Both of them having none of the ultis. Nice defensive clangs on each side here. 25 seconds left on the clock here. This is from the replay. We got a chance to see. Ooh, nice hit to deplete the shield from Star. Both of them trying to find it here. Waiting for it. Oh, catches the ulti. Is able to get the hits though, and that's exactly how you send somebody back to the ER. Just absolutely make sure your hands are wet, pull back, give it a nice. Dr. Gray? Right to the back of the head. <laughs> I'm sterile. No one touched me on sterile. <laughs> He's staying into the surgeon, bro. Hey. Well, full of, I'm not going to say the name. All right. So what's going to happen? <laughs> what's going to happen here is probably going to be a chance for everyone kind of worry about whether or not they're going to look for a parry. Um, that's what Sarega is kind of baiting for for any range shots. But also, if anyone wants to take the chance, they can run up to him. Now, see why? Hippity hoppity, skippity hoppity. He's going to be going ahead and just keeping this momentum up. But you can see an army release out here from uh, AS. He's looking towards Fang. Uh, having to be very careful about what his position is inside of the building because anyone could take the time to gosh, just rush in there or even throw a Tessa ultimate in through the building itself. And he would be safe. It's just like I caught, cast a curse moment, right? Fang finds himself caught into that enchant. There's going to be a chance here into the zone where he could get deleted. The musket shots and the musket shots. Gets caught into the enchant. Gets eliminated by stars as the musket shots comes out. Big upset from this point on, Dolly. Well, absolutely. Even towards that, though, you do have to be like kind of careful for certain instances here. Definitely has to be able to kind of like rotate towards that and be able to just kind of pay attention to like kind of what's happening here. Definitely able to rotate towards that here in terms of what makes sense here. But we're at the final four here. I'm surprised they don't really fight it out a lot harder though. Cause honestly, 
when it comes to that final four, they usually are like super, super aggressive on each other. And it takes one person to really make all the other three start to pay attention to the fight. Yeah. And it, and it causes uh, it causes them like, okay, what's the decision making here, right? There's a stone form, right? But the blue focus vertical comes through. So Rogan denies the soul form proc immediately. I'm not sure why Fang is rocking into the opponent, but he finds an advanced skill proc, and that's going to give him himself a chance. Now, the crazy thing is, is that CY is getting free pistol shots off of Fang. No one's taking the time of actually staggering him through. Even Star is looking towards and using those missile shots, even standing right next to his opponent. And now this is up to the team to just deny a Tessa from entering the end game. But Sarelgun is not the lowest health target; it's the gold armor Tessa. And for CDY, also is revealing that he has a dual ring. If he looks for the one, two, three, gets the silence to be chance here. But there's going to be the push, Dobby, and I think there's maybe a chance here for CDY to look for it. It looks like he's going to find it though, and he ends up getting sliped though. Uh, by the side of S Rail here, because he ends up actually catching some decent damage here. Still has the ulti though. I'm surprised he needs to be able to throw some fireballs. That's what Shuai should be watching as well here. Those fireballs are lethal sometimes. But looks like they're both going to try to see if they can rotate this, trying not to get caught up. Oh, it looks like he sends Fang on the outskirts of the circle here. Almost he is able to dodge it on both of them, both S Rail and Fang here. Definitely does not want to get caught up on the outskirts here. Has to be careful. That circle tick is going to be very, very lethal here in this moment here. Oh, he ends up catching him with the stun, and here we go. Absolutely, CDY gets sent on the outskirts here. Here comes that third party, and obviously, he is not the favorite for this moment here. Absolutely insane push here is JJH a star. Trying to see if he can get not get caught up outside of the circle here. S-Rail and, and Fang all the way up top here. Doesn't have to force anything here. Just lets him kind of fight like as if it's a stepmom and in between the children. Just doesn't decide. He doesn't need to be forced anything if he doesn't have to here. Meanwhile, star. Trying to see if he can capture a stun. He's able to at least capture one here inside of this as the stun actually drops down towards the bottom here. Sends Fang off the outskirts. Says, see you later, buddy. Starts to do a nice little bit of bullying on the outer skirts here. JJH is star is trying to see if he can close out this game and gets himself a dub. He needs one. He catches the first one. He catches the second. Ladies and gentlemen, seven eliminations. JJH finally gets a score on the board. An MVP and his first dub of the night. <laughs>